receive their permanent in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk to you about change of status. About change, change of status. Uh -huh. See, whenever you are saved, your status change. Amen. Your status changes. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you saved? Once you are saved, you cannot be the same again. Hallelujah. Spiritually, you cannot be the same. Physically, you cannot be the same. Financially, you cannot be the same. Emotionally, you cannot be the same. Somebody say, my status has changed. Say it again. Say it again. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Amen. Everybody say after me, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How many things? How many? Everything about you has to become new when you give your heart to Jesus Christ. It's not just your character that must be new. You see, if you are still the same person, you still have the same face, you still have the same uh, size, or when if you are dieting, maybe, but you are the same person. We know, we see your face, but on the inside, something begins to change. Hallelujah. God begins to work out a new person. That is the meaning of being born again. Revelation 21 verse 5. Revelation 21 verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Hallelujah. He makes how many things? How many? All things become new. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. From verse 18 to 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God says, as long as you are giving your mouth to me, you can forget about all the things you used to go through. All the problems, all the sicknesses, all the diseases, all the sins you, need, you, you used to struggle with. You can forget about it. Because I will make everything new. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I will do the impossible and turn your life around. Somebody say, I hear God. Say it again. You know, part of the problem is that we get saved, but we don't read the Bible to see what God has promised. We don't understand what God has said He will do in our lives. So we carry on thinking and seeing uh, we are still the same people. Tell your neighbor if you are saved, say you are looking at a new person. Everything about me is new. My circumstances are new. My situation is new. My life is new. Even my face is new. When you are telling this it shows on your face. Hallelujah. Who we'll look at you and know that something happened in your life. The peace will be there. The joy will be there. Expectation will be there. Hope will be there. There will be no hopelessness on that face. Shout hallelujah. 
So when he changes you, the moment God changes you, he wants to change your status in life, spirit, soul, and body. The way you look at situations, your desires, your priorities, they begin to, they begin to change. You change from the inside to the outside. Hallelujah. And it's a daily occurrence. Everybody say daily. 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 Every day. Something new takes place on the inside of you. You are less fearful. You are less unhappy. You are less broke. Hallelujah. Above all, you are less sinful. Amen. Amen. Everybody say every day. I see the reality of the power of God in my life, in my situation. That is how it should be. Amen? Every day you should understand, you should see, you should even feel that I'm a new person. It says, Behold, I make all things new. It says, Forget about the past. Apostle Paul says, I forget about the past. Maybe I should talk about that a little. Many people don't know how to forget the past. Past glories, past mistakes, past sin, past problems, they carry it. No, you have to put the past behind you and move forward. Hallelujah. If you are going to, how many of you can look back and move forward at the same time? And you are going there and then you are looking like that. You go fall. Hallelujah. You have to face where you are going. that God has made you to be. Face this your new status. Somebody say new status. New status. Hallelujah. If you face it, you will enjoy it. You will wonder where it was all the time. You will wonder why you didn't give your life to Jesus Christ soon enough. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 15. We're there last Sunday. Let's go back there again today. Luke 15. And see some things about this change of status. From verse 11, and he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fallen to me, and he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together took his journey into a far country and there wasted the substance with riotous living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with a husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way up, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Somebody say change of status. Change of status. Change of status. Hallelujah. This boy had a definite problem. He didn't understand who he was. He didn't understand his relationship with his father. He didn't know what it was all about. He thought it was all about materialism, like we said last Sunday. All he wanted was to have his own inheritance and go away. Praise the Lord. And many people are there today don't know the heart of God the Father. They don't understand the relationship they should have with God the Father. And it's not a relationship of materialism. Praise the Lord. It's not about how much money I must make on earth before I die. How much money are you going to take with you when you die? Somebody tell me. How much? Even the coffee that they buy for you. Mm. You're not going to go anywhere with it. It's just into what? Hallelujah. Our relationship with God, the reason why we serve God is not about how much money He can give to us. I need you to understand that there are many people who are not serving God and are richer than all of us that are serving God. One Muslim is probably richer than the entire Namibia in Saudi Arabia or wherever they are, in Libya, wherever. They have money, but they are not going to end you to heaven. So let us start to redefine our relationship with God. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that money is not good, and I'm not saying that God doesn't give money. He gives. You don't actually have to ask. You don't have to beg. You know, if you are a son, you will see it now. If your status changes, if you change your status spiritually, your father will change your status financially. Let me repeat that. Because we always get our priorities wrong. Hallelujah. And Jesus has told us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. So, he got his priorities wrong. He was not seeking the kingdom. He was not seeking the father's heart. He was seeking what he could get. And the amazing is that the father gave him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to your and say, beware of money. Beware of money. I've seen people, a few people who have left the church, they will come and show me their cars and boast to me and, and tell me they are doing fine. Of course, I'm doing fine. It's not about that. Are you doing fine spiritually? Yeah. One of the things for some told me in God, they said, I'm living South Africa, I'm going to say, everything is not about money. You will preach that time. Hallelujah. Everything is not about money. You don't have to be here or there. God, God will bless you with whatever you need. Hallelujah. But if you are not doing His will, it doesn't matter how rich you are, you are going to hell. Hello? Let me repeat that. If you are not where you should be, doing what you should do for Him, obey his voice. If you have the whole of it too, and you are the richest person on earth, he will throw you in hell. It's there. Jesus says it. Is that also? Huh? We all know that scripture. Is that also? Matthew 7. Not all those who are called me Lord, Lord. And you know, Satan can also make you richer when you leave the will of God just to fool you. Spirit of Babylon, we discussed it the other time. I don't know if you know that Satan also has money that he gives out. Yes. <laughs> when you are not in God's will, he will make you because he knows that you are materialistic. So he will make you comfortable in your error. Just so that it's all so the spirit of deception. You say, Ah, God is blessing. Now remember. When God asked you to resign and begin to preach the gospel full time, that was when the registrar of the university decided to call me and say that, Dr. Awole, we, we know that 
you are experiencing a little mind that you pray. We need you to take care of the guest hostess because a lot of things are wrong there. We need you to be in charge of the hostel. And we will pay you. It's like when you are going to pay me was double my normal salary. Just when I was preparing to resign from the university. So Satan opened another door. Hallelujah. And he began to tell me, you see, you will be able to preach to those girls. Is that what God has said? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan tries to change the status, change the information, change what is what he did in the Garden of Eden, and he has not stopped. Hallelujah. So I was being better as long as I can preach to those girls and make more money, I don't have to resign. But that's not what God said. God said, resign and do the work full time. Hallelujah. I didn't even think twice. I just said, no, register. I am not taking that post. In fact, I am about to resign. Praise the Lord. It was tough. Thank God for my husband. He helped me out. But I knew that that was not what God said. Hallelujah. 